Okay, we're going to go back to uh, alternators and generators just for a um, brief, uh, hmm, a break from pouring concrete. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do a video on for a while. Um, a lot of people don't like to have them figure out the wiring for the strings, the coils, and the three phases and all that for generators. So, uh, I got a different way to do it. Um, we have here, uh, magnets, uh, I believe there's 32 of them. <clears throat> this is the same, uh, stator, but we're going to change the crap out of it. Here's our coils, and they're, uh, two magnets long to get enough wire for, to meet the resistance value, but that's in a previous video explaining all that. Okay, this is the connection diagram. Um... I think I had a connection to diagram the way it was done. What we're going to, what we're going to change is the way the coils are connected. So you had these tracks coming around here. And uh, like this red would go around and catch this next uh, red or whatever. In other words, the reds are a phase, the blues and the greens. And they, uh, they come uh, to a common point up here. And that's your... Uh, your three phases of output. However, we're going to do it different. The magnets, the rotors, the windings of the coil, nothing has changed. How the coils are interconnected has changed. Uh, I haven't built this. I just thought I'd put it out there for anybody who, who thought it was a good idea. They could uh, experiment. You don't have to build something with 30 coils, of course. I had thought about uh, having equal coil and magnet counts and then having uh, like three stators and stagger them uh, a third of uh, the rotation of the magnets to get rid of the cogging. But there's no reason not, not to just do it like we've been doing it. You know, uh, I got uh, 30 coils divided by three, see, and 32 mags has to divide by two. There can be any number for this. Doesn't make any difference. What we're going to do, we're going to come off one side of a coil. And we're going to just name that plus. And we're going to come off the other side of the coil. We're going to name that minus. Now, if we're looking here at, at this area, just for convention's sake, we're going to say that the the current flows through the, the through the funnel, and it's restricted um, coming through the funnel on the other side and all that. Or it can't go this way; only goes that way. So these are diodes. Uh, <clears throat> what brought this on was I was figuring the interconnection of the uh, blocking and bypass diodes from a solar array, uh, to, so where I I wouldn't be hurt by clouds and stuff, uh, but just the minimum. So we got power comes uh, from the, like the positive, it comes in here, goes around the coil, comes out of the coil, and then it's got a choice. It can either go the way we that we're headed, which is the way we sent it in, or it could have gone this way. However, uh, this is this diode is blocking, and this one is passing. So the 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 these once here they go down, they go around. And because this one's facing that way, it will go out on this one that way. Now, by the same token, if we had current coming in this way to a coil, it went around and around the coil and came out, it wouldn't go there because that's a blocking diode to this direction. It'll go that way. The reason this thing works is because when your magnet approaches a, uh, um, like here, this one, this magnet is approaching this coil, say, if turn turning clockwise. As it, as it passes this first part of the uh, uh, magnet, the first half, you get, uh, by the uh, uh, right-hand rule, you get this circulation, uh, and w which, uh, you know, the change in magnetic flux makes the, the, uh, the electrons circulate. You get a current flow. When this magnet gets in the center of this position, uh, like down here in the it's not on your screen. Won't make any difference. Uh, here's a magnet here. 
which is centered. This is a zero crossing point. There is no uh, current flow when the magnet is centered in the coil. It's still moving, but at that instant, nothing's happening. So if it was making a clockwise rotation coming in, as soon as it goes across this part, it's going to make a counterclockwise rotation. That's why your uh, alternators are AC, because <clears throat> the magnet passes one side of the coil, and then it you know, quits production in the middle, and then it makes a pass the other side. And that's also the reason why you make this, uh, this inner width of the coil equal to the inner width of the magnet. It gives you the most flux you can, you can jam into a tight space. <clears throat> so what we have here is uh, when the magnets are, are generating current, like if this was counterclockwise current, it, we could tap it off here, it would go up and it would go out and do that all the way around. Any magnet was that was going counterclockwise would go out. And then when it passes zero crossing, then the, the current comes out, doesn't go that way. Well, it, 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 that's the connections. It's a slightly different case. The current comes out, can't go that way, goes this way. So it goes around, and we basically have a plus and a minus uh, of the inner loops from the clockwise and the outer loops from the counterclockwise. I labeled them plus and minus, just for convention's sake, so that the drawing is uh, done all the same way. I put the big end of the diode on plus and the small end minus. There's the actual direction of flow. I never can remember. I got to look it up every time. Uh, but whichever way it is, it's either they're right or they're backwards. I think they're right, but they could be backwards. So now we're looking at it. We have a plus here and a plus there. So we have a, a, a voltage difference between the plus and the minus. So we're going to take the two pluses and connect them together. That's an output lead. We're going to take the two minuses and connect them together. That's a negative output lead. Uh, if uh, if you're going to a, if you come to a point where uh, there is no output, like down here where we have the uh, centered magnet over here, I want to make sure I'm pointing at it on the screen. Um, then then you have current that's coming in here to the coil. It, it's already got a potential difference. So it's going to go right around the coil. It's just not going to add any voltage to it. Whatever voltage it had uh, between these, these ends of this thing coming in, it still got it. Now the rest of them, they're all either uh, adding voltage to the outer one or they're adding voltage to the inner one. But they're, they're constantly adding voltage. So if, if you made uh, uh, 4 volts on, uh, on, on a coil times 30, it would be 120 volts of uh, uh, output. DC. And that's the trick. Making a DC uh, voltage without a rectifier, and no matter which way the current is going through the, uh, the coil, which way, whether it's uh, magnet approaching or magnet leaving, doesn't make any difference. Um, if your magnets are reversed, uh, negative, positive, negative, positive, doesn't make any difference. Whichever way it's, it's, it's trying to send the current after zero crossing is the direction it outputs. And the um, north, and, north to south, north to south, north to south nature of the thing is adding the voltage. And the current will be, uh, oh, I don't know, one third of what uh, all of them would have been if they were all phased together. If you put the... Uh, um, the magnet count and the uh, coil count the same, you're going to get these big pulses of electricity. It'd be like a capacitor the way it would be acting. Uh, and we, of course, that would be a lot more amps uh, at any instant in time than, than having them staggered. So it would be bigger wire. Um, but you're, you're sizing these coils for a, uh, a certain number of amps. You know, we're picking out of the wire gauge catalog uh, a, a wire size that's it carries whatever amps we want to make. If we're wanting to make 13 amps, and, we, and the closest uh, sizes are 12.2 amps and 15, we picked a wire that carries 15. <clears throat> anyway, this is just uh, a flight of fancy from the Wizard Works design shop. 
I do not see why this wouldn't work. I just, I've, I've thought about it a while, and if I had the time to do everything I ever think of, I would build this. But I'm into so many things. As you can tell from the flighty nature of our YouTube channel, we do all kinds of stuff. And we're not even talking about designing uh, motorcycle racing chassis or, or sprint cars. We're, we're talking the stuff that we're doing right now over in the Philippines. And we're not going to get into motorcycle chassis. I just, uh, it's, once you have a few hard and fast rules and know how to set up a frame jig to, to make anything you want, uh, you can you can really build a bunch of different things that all handle very well. Same thing with sprint cars. Oh, one thing on sprint cars: don't cross link your corner or your torsion bars corner to corner. While it uh, uh, you can set it up for uh, your bias for like turn only left on on a circular uh, oval track. Anything where you have straightened that, that uh, steering wheel uh, about two thirds way down the straight for traffic or whatever. This thing will flip corner to corner, and uh, you'll be bouncing 30 feet off the track. Been there, done that, survived. No more cross-length torsion bars. It does work, however, on uh, um, pool trucks. You put a 1,000 horsepower big block in a, in a pickup truck, four-wheel drive, and you'll notice some guys pull out, and they have uh, like the left front tires three feet off the ground, and the right side is touching. It's because they're twisting the whole chassis. Uh, but you can cross-link your chassis, and uh, it'll stay flat and all four wheels will pull. Uh, I got disqualified for that already. I don't know if anybody else has, has done it since, but uh, I uh, I embarrassed some people with a with a stock uh, engine with a two bar carburetor on it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was a uh, it was a pretty big engine. It was a 440 Dodge, 383 Dodge, uh, stuck into a Dodge pickup truck. But it, uh, it pulled more than its fair share. Uh, anyway, uh, the next uh, uh, thing I noted was I was in tech inspection. And uh, I put slip joints in the uh, all the roll bar connections, uh, which made it stay flat. And it, set, it made it rigid when they were <clears throat> when they were actually welded. But to try to get the, the transfer of torque uh, on the opposite, uh, on the light wheel, it has to actually have uh, rotation in those tubes. Anyway, tech inspection didn't find that. They couldn't find out what, I, what I'd done wrong. They didn't like the torsion bars in place of coil springs because uh, the pickup trucks didn't have torsion bars. They, they had coil springs and leaf springs in the back. But I just put four torsion bars on it. There wasn't any, anything against it in the rules. Anyhow, we're talking here about uh, alternators. I just don't want to forget uh, people who actually have actually subscribed to this crappy channel of mine. And seem to have a lot of interest in uh, generators and stators and uh, alternators and motors and stuff. All, all these flat uh, pancake kinds of motors. It's just another option on that. Um, <laughs> this wants you to know you're not being totally ignored by the concrete house building people. Okay. Uh, that's the uh, end of this little rant. If you don't understand it, leave something in the comments. I can't swear I can explain this thing, but uh, if I haven't explained it now, I might say it a different way or something in a comment. Okay. Um, you all remember the four people that are uh, getting shot up in Ukraine for no reason? And and in the pandemic, we had a, uh, one of the guys who works for us, his uh, wife died, left a year and a half old uh, daughter. Really sad. Okay. Later.